This is what Italian traveler Marco Polo brought back from China some 700 years ago. Since then, pasta has spread all shapes and sizes, and so have we pasta lovers. But that's another story. Who would have thought that pasta is actually Chinese in origin? When Marco Polo returned to Venice in 1295, after spending 24 years in the Far East, he brought back with him Chinese pasta noodles. So quickly popular did pasta become that by the 15th century, it occupied a prime position in Italian cooking. In the same era, commercial production began in Naples. Italians today favor macaroni's and raviolis with garlic and cheese. Pastas are generally made from semolina and water. These silos contain more than 30,000 kilos of semolina derived from durum wheat, a hard amber-colored wheat. The semolina heads toward the high-speed premixer, where it will be vigorously mixed with water for five to ten seconds. This machine can treat between one and two tons of semolina per hour. The dough is extracted from the premixer and falls into a first-blade mixer, open to the air. Then the dough goes into this vacuum blade mixer. The mix is now ready to go through the brass molds. Here's a spaghetti mold and a mold for mafalda, very narrow lasagna. And here are molds used to make lined shells and stars for soups, as well as crested de gallo. The dough is injected into the mold under pressure. This rotating blade machine cuts some 12,000 rotinis per minute. That's 720,000 per hour. With the dough being still quite fresh, the rotinis are soft. They will dry somewhat on this plate. Now we move to the lasagnas. The dough goes through this brass mold, and the strips of fresh dough, 107 centimeters long, are placed on these sticks to dry at 65 degrees centigrade. They dry vertically so as to retain their nice flat shape. After drying for 15 hours, the strips are then cut in four, thus making four strips measuring 25 centimeters each. To minimize losses and make cutting the dry lasagna easier. Scissors trim the dough pieces into equal lengths on the sticks. The long lasagna drying process begins. Once dry, the lengths of lasagnas are finely cut. They're now ready for packaging. To make some other pastas, the mix has to be a bit more worked in order for it to have the required shape. The dough goes through this roller, which gives it the desired thickness. And now butterflies are formed. This mold cuts 7,500 of them a minute for a total of 450,000 an hour. The sheet of dough is 61 centimeters wide. It is produced in a steady stream and goes right to the cutting mold. The butterflies fall onto this conveyor to dry somewhat. Then they head toward the next production step. Certain short pastas, such as these butterflies and fazilis, have to be dried. So then they're put into this full dryer. Coming out of the dryer, the pastas are hard and ready for packaging. Here we see the ever popular spaghettis being made. As with lasagnas, spaghettis are also dried vertically. Now this automated machine places the spaghettis onto a cutting table and breaks them to the proper length. The spaghettis are now ready for packaging. Exact quantities to be bagged are determined by computer. Then the spaghettis go gently down this chute. The amount of spaghetti going into each bag is transported and emptied out by this moving container. To make filling easier, the spaghettis are properly positioned by this chute. In just one minute, this machine can package 10 four-kilo bags. 
Whenever needed, it can handle up to 60 bags a minute. Pastas are a favorite meal the world over. This plant makes over 100 different products and every day uses between 60 and 360 tons or the contents of from 2 to 12 truckloads of semolina made from hard wheat. <laughs>